when I can hear scratching in the walls. That's when I know it's time to put out the rat trap. And lo and behold, it's okay. Hello. I have my little rat. So I'm going to take it to my special where I release the rats area, which means taking it for a little ride in my car. Let's go and do that now. <laughs> it's uh, still just coming to dawn. I do get up quite early. Uh, but I'm at my release site, but you can't really see it. I choose this site because there's lots of nice long grass and um, again there you can't see it. Um, lots of nice trees and cover for the rat to bound into. Um, as with the mouse, I don't actually want to hurt the rat. It's just minding its own business. No doubt looking for somewhere nice to come and hang out in winter. But um, I have to concede I would rather that that wasn't in my walls. So, time to, time to set it free. There it went. <laughs> Off to start a new life. Um, there's blackberry underneath that tree, so lots of food, lots of cover, lots of shelter. Uh, I caught five rats last autumn, winter. I wonder if I will top that tally this year. Can you hear that? Now the fledgling sulphur crested cockatoos are at it. Sorry, it's not very clear. That one's the adult and those are the chicks. You know, I was just feeding it. Not the most pleasant noise. I'm not actually sure what it's feeding them. If that is indeed what it's doing. You find me at the range again this morning and so far I have shown you how I maintain it on a Saturday morning and how we clean the chimney and so really the final stage in my range series is to show you how to light it and uh, I think I hope it might be helpful because this is the part that I got the most wrong when I lit it for the first time. It's not that it's difficult, it's just if you don't know how to do it, you don't know how to do it. So I thought I'd show you this morning uh, before I light it. So what you do first of all is fully open the vents on the firebox door. That's this spinny wheel here. This makes the gap between the wheel and the door wider. And you take your tool and you open this back vent here, currently in the shut position, and you turn it till it's in the open position. And this controls um, a flap. Get that out of the way. Basically, it's a flap here. So when it's closed, it shuts off the flow of heat from the firebox to the chimney, um, forcing it around and, the, and down and back up again. 
but when it's open the fire from the firebox will go straight up the chimney, the path of least resistance. And that's how you get the range going quickly. So you, what you want to do is get the chimney really, really hot. And that's what generates the draw when the fire has to go all of this way. Quite a long way for it to go. Anyway, so once I have opened the vents, I then put some newspaper in the firebox. I put some first and second kindling on the newspaper. I light the newspaper and off it goes. Then once the fire is roaring away really nicely, the flue is really hot, I can see a powerful amount of fire going up the chimney. And uh, the temperature gauge here is starting to show me that even the oven's starting to heat up. That's the point I shut um, this vent and start sending the fire through the range. I bought this flannel shirt from Target. I don't see the point of spending a lot of money on shirts for gardening in. Um, but I like this flannel material for winter, uh, obviously to help keep me warm. And I also wear a lot of leggings, they're just so comfortable and practical. And also, if I'm having a bonfire, I tend to wear overalls, and so um, then they're, they're nice and lightweight to go underneath. But as a result, I can often be lacking pockets, and as you would have seen in some of my earlier videos, I sewed pockets onto another flannel shirt I have, and I am in the process. Hello, Peter. <laughs> you want to help? Good girl. <laughs> uh, I'm in the process of sewing on pockets onto my new shirt. So I've cut out the fabric. Um, just some scraps you had lying around. And I've pinned it, I've set up my sewing machine, um, which was a kind gift from my nan. <laughs> yes, nan, I hope you're glad to see it's getting used. <laughs> and so I'm going to hem them and then I'm going to sew them onto the shirt. I'm not going to film myself doing that because it might all go terribly wrong and I'll be hugely embarrassed. So um, <laughs> I'll just show you the end product and um, Hopefully it'll be okay. Okay, that's stage one complete. Um, which involved sewing around the edges of the pockets to seal them in. Uh, I'd say that was probably about 65% successful, which is good for me. But I seem to have ended up with one quite long, thin, tall pocket and one wider, fatter pocket. Um, which isn't necessarily what I set out attending, intending to achieve, but uh, I'll just go with that, it's fine. <laughs> and I've placed them where I want them on the shirt, and uh, what I need to do now, obviously, is sew them down. I must, must remember not to sew the top bit. Oh. <laughs> Peter loves the sewing machine. <laughs> there we go, the finished product. I'm very happy with that. Nice and securely attached and I remembered not to sew it across the top and I'll say this one probably is good for secateurs and it's good for other stuff. It went a bit wrong in places. <laughs> oh, great British sewing bee here I don't come but um, 
I'm very pleased with that and uh, that'll be very handy <laughs> when I'm out and about in the shirt and leggings and I need to put stuff like you somewhere. Now I have pockets. Oh, here we go. Rat take two. Poor little thing. Looks so frightened. It's okay. It's really okay. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm gonna go on a little adventure. Uh, just because I know it is never going to look this nice ever again. I thought I'd just quickly show you my new workwear trousers. They're from the company Green Hip, which specialise in making clothes for ladies. Um, so as you can see, they've got that cool um, knee pad vibe going on. Like now I'm a proper manual labourer. And uh, they've got like 27 million pockets. Pocket there. There's a zippable pocket, a poppery pocket. Uh, on this side we've got a complex of pockets within pockets. Little pocket. Um, sorry, I've got something here I can hang stuff off of. And uh, another pocket at the back. <laughs> so there we go. My lovely new workwear trousers, uh, courtesy of Green hip. Not, I mean, as in, I was given them, as in, they are the people who made them. <laughs> I'm off to go and do some lumberjacking. Don't know how well you can see, but this crimson rosella is rather taking a shine to the bird feeder. It's become a bit of a makeshift perch. I'm sorry that uh, this, this isn't picking up the colour. <laughs> if I open a door, it'll fly off. But, um, Seen through a normal eye, this bird is a lovely shade of red. Sweet dreams, crimson rosella. I just thought I'd very quickly show you. Um, I'm making some lavender bags. Uh, I've got a couple of English lavender plants, and this year what I've done is I've left the flowers on the plant to dry. And what I'm doing now is taking the little flowery bits off the stems. That's what I've done so far. And I might just leave them to dry out a little bit further overnight and then I will stitch them into little cotton bags and I will place them in with my clothes. I keep my clothes in plastic tubs because I don't have space for a wardrobe in my bedroom and I hate to just help freshen them up a little. And it's nice to be able to use stuff from the garden <laughs> that the animals haven't got to first. I thought I'd finish this week by giving you an update on my hair adventures. As you may or may not know, in the very first vlog when I set out my stall, I wanted to explain that this wasn't only going to be about gardening and wildlife. I wanted a vlog which represented a much broader range of things that are happening in my life and things that I'm interested in. And at that point, one of the things that I was struggling with was my hair. Uh, it had become very dry and brittle and frizzy and I in part attributed that to the environmental conditions here. It's often very humid and it's summer here as well. And also um, quite a large percentage of my hair is grey. I don't dye it because um, I quite like going grey. <laughs> and obviously that has... A different texture than my natural hair. It must be possible to apply some sort of logic or science or pseudoscience to the problem and um, so I did quite a lot of research and I want to caveat this by saying that hair is difficult if you didn't know that already. There are so many variables from your gender, your age, your ethnicity, your environmental conditions, your genetics, your diet, um, that means that anything I'm about to say I hope might be of interest, possibly of use, but um, is personal to me and may have no benefit for you at all. However, 
the starting point for me was working out my hair's porosity. And I discovered that a good way to do that is by taking some strands of hair from a hairbrush is fine and putting them in a glass of water and basically if the hair floats you're defined as having low porosity hair which means the hair strands, the, the follicles on the hair strand are very tightly packed so that moisture has a hard time getting either in or out of your hair strand. If it floats for a bit and then sinks <laughs> um, you've got normal porosity and if it sinks straight away you've got high porosity hair which means the follicles are already splayed out so that moisture easily gets in and gets out of your hair. Now some people claim that this is a very hit and miss on scientific method because there'll be product on your hair strands and it'll be naturally greasy which means it'll be inclined to float anyway. But you can use that in conjunction with other factors like how long it takes your hair to dry from wet if when you wash your hair go or go out in moisture, does the water sit on your hair, sort of beady, uh, before it absorbs? Um, and putting it all together, I discovered that I most likely have low porosity hair. Once I knew that, I was able to re refine my regime. And I've been doing that for a while now. And I hope you can see that I feel like, um, accepting the fact that I've just been out working in the garden and I'm hot and sticky and um, I've been making a general mess, I feel like my hair is looking much better, shinier and less frizzy. So this is what I've been doing. So once a week I use a clarifying shampoo um, to get all the products off my hair, low porosity hair, um, product would just tend to sit on it and weigh it down. So I use a clarifying shampoo once a week and then I put uh, a nice silicon free humectant conditioner on this lower part of my hair only. I use one from Santa Maria Novella which has honey in it and honey is a humectant. A humectant is an ingredient that attracts moisture to itself. I then put a shower cap on my head and um, go about the rest of my shower or bath, get out, dry myself off. And then I rinse my hair under cold water to help um, seal it all in. Um, and then I allow it to dry for not very long and when my hair is still pretty wet I put a leave-in conditioner again just on the length, these sort of lower bits of my hair. I'm using one from Akin, but um, I'm going to try one that has honey in it also as a, a ingredient, I haven't bought that yet. And then as a last layer I put on a, a like literally a drop of a hob oil which I warm up in my fingers and, and run through. Um, you have to be careful with low porosity hair, but some of those types of, of lighter oils like ahoba and argan oil apparently are quite good. And it's been working an absolute treat. And I can also confirm that another problem that I've been having is um, slightly sort of thinning hair around my temples. And you can probably see all this regrowth. Um, that's courtesy, so I'm looking a bit mad now. <laughs> oh well. Um, that's courtesy of the caffeine shampoo that I've been using um, the other times in the week I wash my hair. Um, so all in all, I, th I feel like I'm regrowing hair, which is great, and the my hair just feels so much smoother. It looks much shinier, it's way less frizzy. Um, so if you're struggling, I'd look into ways that you can test your hair's porosity and then take it from there. It's really worked for me and I uh, couldn't be happier.